Hi. Hello. Happy Friday. Hi, chat. Welcome. Again. How many streams have we done this week? It's like constant, baby. I've been away from you guys for like one day. Yeah, it's a Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday stream chat. Uh, I wasn't like I wasn't supposed to stream this Friday. This was supposed to happen on Wednesday, but there was there was some like last minute stuff that um, needed to change. But here we are now. But I'm going to hang out and chat for like half an hour um, before, you know, we're just going to hang out and vibe a little bit. I'm still a little bit sleepy, so I'm trying to get my engine going. The burnout is nearly mandatory. Nuh uh. Nuh uh. We'll see what happens. If I break, I break. I'm limit testing. <laughs> I'm testing how far I can go. Mm -hmm. We still have tomorrow and Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I, my, um,. Is my VTube studio getting fidgety? I might have to restart it. I mean, let me just... It could have stopped tracking because I was drinking. Eh, whatever. How long will this stream be? Three hour? Technically, I only need to stream it uh, for two hours after my intro. But I don't know, we might go further depending. Uh, I'm an unironic Ace Attorney fan. I'm not saying this because I'm sponsored. I'm an unironic Ace Attorney fan. I'm a huge fan of the original trilogy. Does this stream lead up to a real life court case? Yeah, we'll fucking see by the end of it. <laughs> we'll see if I have blood on my hands by the end of it. <laughs> but I've never played Apollo Justice, so I am genuinely, genuinely interested to play it. No, the only one of these that I have played was Dual Destinies, but I didn't finish it. I did like the first two cases because um, I was in like, I was in school at the time. No, I've the only, yeah, I've only done the original trilogy and like the first two cases of Dual Destinies. Okay. No, I haven't, I haven't done the spinoffs. I haven't done the Miles Edgeworth one. I, I haven't, I haven't done them. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, happy Friday. Uh, what models at the top left? Uh, don't <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you stream your real job now. I don't work in law anymore. I used to, briefly, but uh, <laughs> don't worry. Law, the legal system within Ace Attorney is completely different than how it is in real life. They have their own fantasy system and it's, it's beautiful and it's beautiful. And I won't be criticizing it or critiquing it. Do you guys have weekend plans? I don't have, I mean, I'm just fucking streaming over the weekend. I'm streaming like every day. Am I gonna burn out? Am I gonna burn out? Nah, I fucking got this. Besides next week, I'll have more days off because I didn't have to rearrange my schedule. Can you critique hours when you stream this? Our legal system? You guys want me to critique the legal system live on stream? No way, bro. <laughs> I'm an anime girl. <laughs> no way. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a, a Twitch streamer. Sounds like a bad idea. Oh yeah, don't even get me started on the plea deal system. 
There's hella discourse. <laughs> Don't force anyone who has actually worked in law to critique the legal system. It's a cruel and unusual punishment. Nobody goes into, uh, nobody goes into like studying legal system or studying crime or anything like that coming out on the side of the legal system. <laughs> Anyways, I don't have much to talk about. I had a dream. Do you guys want to hear about my stupidest fuck dream? I, I, uh, fucking, okay. So you know the Outer Wilds DLC, like the big ring? Okay, so I was in a ring world basically where you could like, everything was like purple and like dark and it was like in space. And I could like, like you could look up and you could see like the other side of the ring. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, yeah, lean ring world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and there was like all these stars that were like hovering over the ground and I had to go and find them. And I had to, I had to, because like the stars would teleport you to different locations because I was also playing Dark Souls. Um, but this was like how I was supposed to access the next area. It was like a very cryptic way where I had to find a certain star in a certain area of the ring world. And I had to find it and like interact with it and be teleported to this place. But if I was too slow, uh, the wave would come and it would it, and it would wash uh, everything away and it would like drown me and I would have a scripted death and I would end up teleported to somewhere else, right? Okay, okay, okay. And this happened multiple times. Like it really pissed me off because I was like, where's the fucking star that I'm supposed to like teleport? with um and, and 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 it kept on like i kept on like getting caught up in the wave before i could and it really pissed me off but then chat i was working at a cd store yes yes a hell of a pivot i was working at a cd store and it was in a mall and it was in like a corner of a of like the corner of the mall okay and it i and i really really liked working at the cd store because for one, nobody fucking buys CDs anymore. Like nobody ever, ever, ever went into it. I was basically just paid to be there by the owner so that I could just, so that there was a staff member, even though nobody entered it. So I would just like sleep and like fuck around on my phone the entire time and get paid for it. And that was my dream. And I did that for days in my dream. You think so? You think this was part of like a, a money laundering scheme? <laughs> hey guys, I think I'm fixing my sleep schedule. Okay, you know how I was working, sleeping like 11 to 12 hours a night? I, I, I've started setting, not an alarm, because it's not that I wanted to wake up at a certain time. Because like, what if I was up really late and then I had to wake up at a certain time, right? And, and then I wouldn't like have enough sleep. So I started setting a timer for like, for like nine hours before stream. So I like lay in bed and I'll fuck around on my phone for an hour and then I'll sleep eight hours. And then the alarm will wake me up. Chat, I'm fixing myself. I'm being fixed. I'm doing it! <laughs> I slept properly! <laughs> Eight hours, baby! It's real! I can be fixed! I'm fixable! <laughs> it's not over! It's not over! The more she laughs, the less I believe her. What? Huh? I've never lied, ever. Maybe I'll actually commit to it, okay? 
you get fixed, we won't be able to relate to you anymore. Yeah, but then, then the coin flip chat, the coin flip is that then I can give you advice. Then I could be like, hey, used to be there. This is what I did to fix it. And I'm telling you guys, the timer system works. <laughs> this is we back. How long do you think till the next it's all over? I'm gonna give us like, I'm gonna give us like three days. <laughs> Like three days and then it's all gonna be over. <laughs> it's so over. It's, it, we'll see, we'll see. I can power through it though, probably. Three days of we back chat. We might as well enjoy it, right? Wait until your body just doesn't wake you up after the timer goes off, lol. But why wouldn't it? If I've gotten eight hours of sleep, why wouldn't my body wake me up when the timer goes off? It's, it's just, it's gonna work. It's going to work. CO2 death. Yeah, I'm a light sleeper, chat. I'm a light sleeper. Like, one alarm will wake me up. I'm not one of those fucking guys. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I'm I'm not one of those fucking guys that needs to set, like, eight alarms that all go off ten minutes apart. Say it? Why is everyone looking at me weird? Why is everyone doing this? What's going on? Did I say something wrong? Stop staring at me. Because <laughs> I'm literally insane. What the fuck? What did I do? I've never seen you guys act like this before. This is so strange. <laughs> it's not over. Whatever. Guys, sometimes I'm such a light sleeper. Or when I was like... When I was like living at home and like still going to school, I had like a like a digital clock that had an alarm on it and the static pop, like it would make this tiny little static pop before the alarm went off, right? It would go like, pop, and then the alarm would go. And the static pop would be enough to wake me up and my hand would already be on the alarm to turn it off. Basically, I'm, I'm a coiled viper chat. No one can fuck with me ever if I'm asleep. I'm wound up like a spring. <laughs> I tell my alarm to get up. <laughs> Do you plan to stream more Ace Attorney after the sponsored stream? Probably eventually, but right now we're sort of getting through a couple of things. So we'll just like have to see. Cause um, what do you think about changing the official channel slogan to it's our soupy doopy doopy who makes us go loopy and whoopy. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Don't, don't fucking call me soupy doopy joopy. It's gonna make me, it's, it's so cringe. It's cringe. Like, I, I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's so bad it's good either. <laughs> How come you streaming on Friday? It's a long story. I had to. I had to rearrange something. Tee -hee. But now I'm here. Now I'm here. I'm just trying to dial in. Just trying to get my engine going. Drinking my gamer juice. Guys. 
I don't like it. It's not a good slogan. Chat, I'm not a hater either. I'm literally not a hater. I've never hated anything. I'm basically an angel. I'm a merciful god. She hates us. Hmm. No, chat, I'm a merciful god. I don't hate anything. It just has to win my respect. That's all. And I'm humble. And I'm dialed in. I'm locked the fuck in. I'm locked in. I'm dialed in. Hey, chat. I wish I could work on my live 2D. <laughs> hey, chat. Hey, chat. I wish I could... <laughs> I wish I could work on Life 2D. The amount of dopamine that flooded into my brain after that stream, I was like, this is where I belong. Fuck. Fuck. But I can't. I can't, I can't work on the head anymore. Not on stream. So the only thing I can do is do the art for it. it is do like the body art. I haven't drawn more of the model. Drawing more of the model is like agony. It's gonna be so painful. Doing art for Live 2D is like, is like putting your balls through a meat grinder. It's not fun. <laughs> it's really, really long and it's really tedious. But the payoff, the rig, making it move, that's big. I'm like, <laughs> chat, me, me doing this, it, it, this is like me going out onto the streets and finding cigarette butts and putting them in my mouth and eating them. Like, I, <sighs> where am I gonna, when am I gonna get my next hit? When am I gonna get my next hit, chat? Girl breakfast. When I need, <laughs> I need my girl breakfast. <laughs> You are not fixed! <laughs> I'm a threat to society, baby! It's like having a child. It is like having a child. You create something and you know that it's yours. And that's beautiful. You just wouldn't get it. Fucking, fucking opens up my bag of cigarette butts, puts one of them in my mouth, chews it, swallows it. <laughs> we still got like five to ten minutes before, uh, before we're getting into it. The judge is gonna execute us all. I don't, I don't remember if the if the death penalty is a real thing in Ace Attorney. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it isn't. Unless it is. Okay, it is. I'm pretty sure somebody in the original trilogy got the death penalty. It is. They just don't bring it up. Yo, thank you, Positive Paladin. Besides chat, they wouldn't execute me. I'm an angel. Death penalty is added exclusively for your clients. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm an angel of cringe. Hey, thanks for the 35 month slicks. And one or two of them had death penalty in the last game. That's what I was saying. Like, I have a vague memory of it, but I don't remember, like, the context. Arr. 
It doesn't really matter. Guys, I'm not an icon of cringe. I'm just cringe ironically. That's not... That's not, like... That disqualifies me. She'd make a terrible prosecutor. She folds too fast. Wrong! Wrong, chat. I'm a, I'm a pit bull with my jaws locked into the leg of the law. I don't back down. What's my pit bull name? Peanut butter. Yeah. Does it send chills down your spine? <laughs> Donut. <laughs> Donut the pit bull. Holy shit. Holy shit! <laughs> Terrifying! <clears throat> Baseball! <laughs> Baseball! No, I haven't had my mental breakdown yet. This might happen during... Well, the first cases are always really easy because they're like tutorial cases. But it might, it might still happen if I think, okay, because like this will happen occasionally where you like accidentally figure out the next step before, before like the one that you're supposed to be on. So you'll like present material and the game will be like, no. And then, and then, then it'll, then it'll fuck me up. Then I'll like lose my mind. We got five more minutes, chat. Five more minutes. I had leftover mango curry for lunch. I love mango curry. I love anything that's spicy and also has a little bit of sweetness in it. Like the mango curry was, was Indian curry, but I also really like red Thai curry because it's like spicy and it's also sweet and like coconutty. That shit is delightful. Just like me. Yeah, just like me, chat. Spicy sweet as king! I, yeah, it had real mangoes in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've never had Thai papaya salad. I was just talking about what I was having for lunch, chat. That's all. I like spicy food. Uh, even though it hurts me. Even though it hurts me, but I like to experience pain. I find it stimulating. Also, some flavors, chat, some flavors in the anime kingdom, anime, animal kingdom, animal kingdom, all of those things were wrong. What the fuck? Food kingdom. Some flavors in the food kingdom. <laughs> are locked behind a gatekeeper. And that gatekeeper is spice tolerance. So if you have no spice tolerance, you'll never be able to experience like how delicious bulldog noodles are. Why did I say that? What the fuck? Am I insane? Huh? Or like, or like wings, or like, like, like red, like buffalo wings, like buffalo flavors. That's another flavor that's locked behind the gatekeeper of spice tolerance. <laughs> but you have to be, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, chat. 
between you and me, you have to be a real pussy if you can't handle buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, it's tame. It's tame. I like to make my own though, uh, cause I'll like, I, I just like to mix Red Hot, like Frank's Red Hot and, uh, and honey and butter. And then I'll toss wings in it and it's divine. It's much better than that shit you could just get out of a bottle. Frank's Red Hot is trash sauce. I mix it. I mix it with other things. Basic ass. What? How the fuck else are you supposed to make buffalo sauce? Huh? What the hell? Or do you mean like I should be seasoning it in a completely different way? Which I don't want to, by the way. I want to. I want to have buffalo hot wings. Do you think that, is there a le a fucking less basic way to make buffalo sauce? I'm gonna lose my mind. Are we, I ch chat, I think we're both on some shit today. What's going on? What are the vibes? Why are the vibes like this? They're overcooked. Who did this? <laughs> Vibes are cooked. You stream too much this week. I am also in physical agony. Can you tell? But I'm fine. I took like three ibuprofen. <laughs> Let's get it. It's time to go. It's time to go, baby. Venus is in retrograde. I hide it pretty well. It's game time, baby. No chat, the vibes are not rancid. Don't say that. You're gonna break my little heart. Vibes are ADHD. No, 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 no. I'm just dialing in. Okay. Apollo time. <laughs> Vibes in shambles. <clears throat> No chat, I don't take Tylenol. I'm an ibuprofen bitch. I'm an ibuprofen girl. Okay, hold on, let me game capture really quick. I am a girl. Oh, we're on to something. Yay! Apollo time. Okay. Fuck, one sec. I'm sorry. Hey, oh, also, thank you for the 18 months, Tone Deaf Tony. Thanks, Slicks McGee. Thanks, Jabs. Thanks, Exo Hammer. Thanks, uh, Tradition. Thanks, Mochstis. Thanks, Clizzard. Thanks, Number Man. Thanks, Ray Ray. No, 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 chat. There are girls on the internet. It's just. It's just we're all kind of hard to look directly at. It's like, it's like there's a bright light shining like a glow it's just there's like a a glow coming from us
Is this better? Stop pretending. We all know you're a 47-year-old Bosnian man. Aw, oh, shit. Crank that shit. I'm not gonna crank it. It's too loud. Music up one more? Nah, no, 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 no. This is loud enough, I think. Here, I'll just, like, mix it a little bit differently. Yeah. Hey, so before we start, they wanted me to show you some of the features of the game. Um, hang on. First, I need to find the features of the game. <laughs> wee, 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 wee. Hey, hang on. Hang on, boys. <laughs> game selection museum? Chat, did you guys see a museum? Okay, okay, okay. One of the things... Oh, oh, wait, okay, here. One of the things they wanted me to show you, do you guys remember when everybody on Twitter was like, <laughs> they were making like Ace Attorney edits of like Twitter arguments and shit? Okay, so they made that like in the game. They like, <laughs> like you can just, I, okay, I don't exactly mouth flap on off. I don't I haven't like even fucked with this at all So I don't really know Let's see is there like a timeline I can do Yeah, objection dot lol. Yeah, 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 yeah I like set the background I can green screen this shit Fuck, that's way too bright. <laughs> what is Phoenix wearing? Wait, hold on. I missed it. One sec. <laughs> My man looks washed up. Holy shit. No, chat, that is Phoenix. Okay, so I'm gonna start Apollo Justice today. Apollo Justice takes place years after the original trilogy. It's like a sequel. Um, Objection! Okay, stop. Don't stop yelling. I don't know if you can, like, configure a timeline or anything, but you can do this insane shit. <laughs> he got divorced at least twice. At least. At least, I reckon. And then you got like OST and stuff. <clears throat> you get the drill. You get the idea. Hey, I'm gonna play Apollo Justice now because I'm obsessed with Ace Attorney and I wanna play Apollo Justice on my stream. Everyone shut the fuck up. This is so important to me. Okay, I'm kidding. You guys can talk a little bit. Is this blind? I've never played Apollo Justice before, no. Showdown time. Damn, we had three kings! Wait, is that, is that Phoenix? It looks like he's wearing the hat. Well, if it is Phoenix, he's <laughs> Inscription DLC looks fire. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cop should be here any minute. 
I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? No, don't worry. This, being, this stream is not going to be confusing. This is like a, from what I've heard, this is a good jumping in point. But before every case, they always do like a, like a, a, like vague, surreal little cut scene where they just like show little glimpses of the case, you know? <clears throat> Anyways, it's April 20th and we're in the district court. Panicked. Palm sweaty. I can admit it. I'm nervous. Oh, he's a boy failure. Ah, good morning. G good morning, sir. You look tense. Justice. Wound up tight. W wound up, sir. He's so pathetic. <laughs> Wait, he's pathetic. Apollo's pathetic. This is good. Because Phoenix was also pathetic. Wound up, sir. No, I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose that's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't smart start small, eh? Is that a... Is that a... I, I'm fine. Are you kidding on me? I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine. Ah, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. <laughs> I did it again. My man was practicing his attorney voice in front of the mirror. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down if you get my drift. Drift gotten, sir. I'm, I'm all over that drift. As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes. Yes, I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. Fuck, I do that. <laughs> oh no. People might take you the wrong way. Ooh. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. You walk into court, Apollo Justice is your attorney. What do you do? <laughs> My name is Apollo Justice. Wait, I should do. Sh I should give him Shonen voice, right? He's gonna have Shonen voice. <clears throat> My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. <laughs> Today is my first trial. N not that I'm worried or anything. <laughs> the defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course. And <laughs> so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. <gasps> it's him. I knew it was him. Whoa. <laughs> what are you looking at, boy? Good up, morning. Morning? It's all up to you today. First trial, nervous. Meeting him, cardiac arrest. I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help? <laughs> Wait, why did they make Phoenix so cute? <laughs> Stop. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you're... Fine, I, I'm fine. Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why? You'll see. J why are you looking at me like that? What the fuck does that mean? You can do it. Be confident. I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean, I mean, I... It's time, shall we? Yes, sir! When did Phoenix get so... cryptic? Oh yeah, if I'm sending friend requests to anybody on Discord, it's not real. They're probably trying to sell a Fiverr service. 
First trial, here comes justice. Sorry, attorney. True. The court is now in session. Oh my fucking god. Hold on, I need to... I'm overheating again. One sec. I mean, ready, your honor. Am I going blank? Don't panic. Uh, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial. Y yes, your honor, but I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure your voice sounds a bit straight? <clears throat> Mr. Gavin? Yes, your honor? I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. Okay, we have a tutorial buddy. We have a little tutorial buddy. <laughs> Imagine working at McDonald's and your name is Mr. Hamburger. <laughs> Wait, so his name is Christoph Gavin, right? Or is it Gavin Christoph? That's like not a pun or anything. What the fuck? This guy isn't real. This guy's like a, a, a fucking tulpa. He's not canon. <laughs> However, a defense attorney must always cede to his client's wishes, and my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice, but to entrust his case to this Greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine, but does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Why does Phoenix want to get locked up? Is he like financially struggling? <laughs> is he, is he like? <clears throat> this is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? Papa. What happened to you, Phoenix? What happened to him? <laughs> He's broken. We need to fix him. <laughs> These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. <laughs> Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne. Hold on. To think. To think. I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I see you leave in chains. Ah, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. Ahem. The crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him, wham, on the head, a smack, killed him cold. Hmm. A customer at the restaurant, you say. And the defendant, you say he was... The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, pianist. This is a weapon that took the victim's life, a bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. Is... Nah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I ain't buying it. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court records. There's the defendant, Mr. Wright's print. <clears throat> Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Do we have an autopsy report? Okay. I know they're gonna do the classic, like, Ace Attorney switch up where they release an updated autopsy report right when you think you've solved it. 2 a.m. April 17th, single blow to the forehead. Okay. 
basement? Why is there a window with light in it? Oh, sub basement. Okay. Okay, I thought I. <laughs> we'll remember this, right, chat? <laughs> Oh, his little badge. He's keeping it in his pocket. <sighs> Cute. Okay. <clears throat> Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record. Right. I've heard of that. Use E to look at the evidence. What's E? <laughs> right. Just use E. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. You think Apollo would ever go hands-on with Kristoff? So the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only just returned to the country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant. That, too, is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe that they first met at the Borsch Bull Club on the night of the crime. But they'd only just met and one murder. Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Is it poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself! Oh. Indeed, it appears our dependent has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. Okay. The basest? <laughs> yeah, gambling is basest. <laughs> basest. <laughs> basest crime. It's true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim, yet it was only that, a game in the purest sense. A competition, Your Honor. A, a competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, knew its final outcome. Er, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those presents and impress women. That will be our first order of business here then, to find out more about this fatal game of cards. Why is he looking so smug? What is Phoenix up to? Phoenix is up to some shit. What's he doing? What's he doing here? Very well, defendants. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it, my first trial. Here goes nothing. He looks like a little chicken. <laughs> I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is, a game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Very well, the defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. B bullets Where? <laughs> it's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir! You watch me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? <clears throat> I don't remember how to play Ace Attorney. Better safe than sorry. I know nothing. Your job, Justice, is to be mindful of the court record and the testimony. Look for inconsistencies in the testimony with what the court- No, I mean the mechanics. I mean the mechanics. That's when you present the conflicting- Okay, alright, I remember now. But I didn't hear anything strange at all in the testimony just now. A good sign that you need to press the witness with Q for more information. 
press him. Oh. <laughs> Don't let the fact that he's a remarkable man hold you back. Get more information. But is it Mr. Wright, my client? Well, think you can do it? Y yes, thank you, sir. I think I can do it. I think you'd better, or we're gonna have a problem. Just remember, find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies, lies. Phoenix Wright? As if, Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> something is, something happened to him. <laughs> We have to milk Phoenix. I'm a penis by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. Okay, why are you a penis by trade then? <clears throat> you can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes when customers demand it. So I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Is that supposed to be a boast just now? The title of penis is a mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. Why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. Hold it! They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I'm a professional after all. Bah, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. What the fuck? Why is Phoenix like- <laughs> Why is Phoenix savage now? Wh what I played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Wait, you never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. Just played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? The room where we play in the competition in there are the club's main attractions. Hold it! Room of the crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? On the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. The smoky room, gambling hoods, you know? Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. <laughs> Bosses gather on the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps a watch through this small window. I can practically picture it now. So there's a witness? That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it. Though it was a common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. The goon window. <laughs> the rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Is this why you do- mm. Two decks of cards. A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else we noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely, cards on the table, cards on the floor, each one forming a complete deck. The crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. <clears throat> Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. Oh, dealer tables typically alternate between two decks to prevent tampering? That's cool. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker, you make five-card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes! <laughs> A game of hands. Huh? 
Uh, huh? This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right! It was a simple game, after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment the crime occurred, yet you claim no connection to the crime. Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. I completely let that one slip by! Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir? Right. There's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. Oh, thank you for the bits, Salami. Also, happy birthday, Kevin. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Sure, why not? Very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I've got myself a whole new testimony. Oh, fuck. Okay, I started paying it. Stop paying attention for a second. <clears throat> Hold it! Wait, 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 wait. I was trying to tab through the dialogue! Okay, that's fine too, though. Silence? The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor, yes? Great. I didn't have enough to do already. Justice, did you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait, something you said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? When you figure it out, I suggest presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. If you need more information, don't forget to press. Right, I got it. I'm fine. I'm aware. Okay, maybe we can tap through it with... Yeah, okay. Can I double press a statement? I probably can. never touched the murder weapon? Okay, well, obviously that's wrong. I mean, you definitely touched it at some point. Objection! So you say you did touch the murder weapon, right? We're just doing the tutorial. Like, obviously it has fingerprints on it. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Guys, I know you can hear my Steam achievements. It's cause, uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> I'm using desktop audio capture right now. No need to shout, I can hear you just fine. Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears, and our case. But, what about my cords of steel? Any anyway! What's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove you did it. Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted, and there can only be one reason for that. Yeah, to, to brain someone with the bottle. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh? I see no problem, Justice. Huh? 
The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Why is everyone you'll seeing me this case? Am I being tested? Are they fucking with me? I know they're up to something. Defendant, can you explain the fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Mm, not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. What well, that might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that. Yeah, you, you can self-report. Really? Er, yes, well, according to the case file. The murder was reported near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? Yay! Diagrams! <clears throat> the victim was murdered in a small room in a basement two floors down from ground level. Two floors down from ground level? Okay, so I guess that window... The light coming through that was from the hallway then. Oh well. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from, from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And the phone, the phone that made this call. Hmm. Two floors down? What's between the two floors? Or what's between the basement floor and the restaurant floor? The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose, yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he's being uncooperative. Urgh. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client long enough for the time being. To toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about. What was it you just said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> hey, thanks for the tier two story. You're as good as you say say you are. So someone else was in the room night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up until now has been a warm-up justice. Are you ready? Yes! I'm done with the tutorial! I know how to play the game now. Yay, 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 yay. I'm gonna ult. Very well, the prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. Oh, baby girl. Oh, no. The witness will state her name and profession. Uh, hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking things. So I use a little hair gel. Relax, people. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. You... Are you sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please, come out. Is it violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? Well, if you are sure, it's okay. Oh, baby girl. Give her the Russian accent. What the fuck? W wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's, um, paraphernalia? Er, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. These are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... <laughs> Olga Orly. Wait, okay. Fuck, I don't know how to do a Russian accent. Do they do they do the Z? Like the this is this is it? Wait as a waitress? I am employed as a waitress in the Borish Bowl Club restaurant. Then why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Borish. That is naming restaurant. But I also perform how is it said? Other service. 
I take it one of these other services is taking the customer's pictures. Da da. Da. Is it da? Da? I don't know. <laughs> like, for example, this one. Oh shit, she has more photos for us. That's good. What was he eating? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's pi piano? Oh, hold the da a bit longer. What? What is? What is that? Is it like yes? Is it like da? Also, don't know what the fuck bo borscht. Borscht. Oh, it means yes. Okay. That's the defendant? Indeed, on the night of the murder. Am I saying it right, chat? Am I saying it, like, even close to right? Men in white hats is one who has gone kaput. Indeed, that is the victim. Order? This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. In the same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps of customers. Casually. Then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Huh. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me, the hideout? It's a type of super stew and it's damn good. Maybe I'll look up a recipe. It is room where famous gangster bad guy was arrested. It is room where murder took place. What? For look of utter surprise, it is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da, da. Photos will be numbered, and you will write which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. Victim, Shaddy Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly, our witness. Proud Bor Borsh? Oh, Borsh. I see. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Very well. Witness, you will testify to the court about that night's events. Night, customer asked me to deal cards for tea. It was hot. Both players played with hats on. Da. The victim, he plays whole time with his hand on pocket, on locket at his neck. Then, last hand is done. But something terrible has happened. Da. That man threw at victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious the winner was the victim, Mr. Smith? Objection! That's ridiculous. Uh, because because Mr. Wright can't lose. <clears throat> Justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But he hadn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as a prosecutor either. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. These are the poker chips as they lay the very moment of the crime. The hand and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Duh, I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army and the chips are the spoils. I, I know that, after all, in my youth I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means poker face. Hmm. Looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Well, is there evidence of him strangling? Uh... Shifty? Shady? <laughs> you know what I mean. 
customer asked me to deal cards for game. Hold it! You were dealing cards. You do this often? Za, I'm doing this. If customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borsh, cards, more borsh. It is my work. It's good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of service. I, I fucking missed the judges, like, a complete nonsense interjections. <laughs> Welcome you to Borish Bowl Club, where Borish is as warm as the waitresses. Thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. Have a good night, Vilker. It was cold. Both players played with hats on. Duh. Hold it! It's already April. How could it be cold? Basement level? At Borish Bowl Club, we have pride on authentic Rustin, Russian restaurant theme. Outside, it is city in spring, but inside, it is always cold as Mother Russia. No way am I going there. When it comes to hot borish, cold is best seasoning, huh? The victim, he plays whole time with hand on locket at his neck. Hold it! His locket? I believe it was good luck charm, huh? He could have fit many times as he played that night. Yes, he must have felt as though it would carry him to the moon and the stars, though if it were actually small enough to fit around his neck, it wouldn't have much left. Ah, uh, the defense would like a clarification. This is a locket we're talking about. I mean, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rock. Apollo, what are you talking about? What are you fucking talking about? Of course, I know that. There's probably a pendant shaped like a rocket. That's why she called it that. Huh? Get out of the kitchen! You're burning it! No, a locket's a locket! It doesn't matter what shape it- It's considered bad form to poke fun at the heart of hearing in our society. Buh. Heart of hearing or heart of understanding? So what happened next? He's onto nothing at all. Holy shit. Nothing at all. Then, last hand is done. But something terrible has happened. Damn it! Oh, it is a localization thing because all L and R sound similar, right? It's the click, the, 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 docket, docket. Something terrible. Eek! The defense will refrain from evil shouting. Oh, okay. Sorry, judge. Now, Miss Orly, can you tell us what happened? Oh, I was so frightened. Duh, I trembled with fear. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death! Hold it! That's not what killed him, though. But the defendant would never do such a thing! Well, now, I can't say I've ever heard the defense try this tactic. If possible, please refrain from embarrassing me. Still, why would anyone do something like this over a game of poker? Perhaps it is because defendant has lost game. Yes, a crushing defeat for a man undefeated. So it is always with men like him. Winners make sore losers. How the mighty fall. Go ahead. I believe you know what it is you need to do. Yeah, 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 Wrong! Incorrect! There's no evidence of this! OBJECTION! Oh really? Strangled, you say? That's odd! <laughs> Nothing personal! Da! Normal customers only choke on borscht. No, I meant this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Miss Orly, really now? Did you witness the crime? <laughs> hmm. Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. That is weird. 
If we buy the game through the store link in your description, do you get a portion? Yes. Yet, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Maybe put the hat back on. Here's the photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that is quite shocking, isn't it? This head certainly was hit. But, but, I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at victim, his neck. Justice. I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. Well, what do you mean? I found a contradiction. I mean, maybe, he, like, Phoenix could have strangled him, like, a little. <laughs> Like, as a treat. Like, it just shows cause of death. It doesn't say that he didn't strangle him or there's no damage on the neck. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue this cross-examination. There is such thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such thing as thinking aloud too much, too. I wonder if I need to press something else. <gasps> Chat, you guys are unhinged. Stop. <laughs> You're sick. You're sick. This is weird. This is weird, right? This is weird. Yeah, okay, all right. Let me just... I wonder if... I wonder if he was using the locket as like a mirror. No, that doesn't make any sense. Right? Anything about hitting before. So, so sorry, I must be forgetting this. Duh. Witness, you will take greater care with your testimony! Duh, duh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. That clears up the discrepancy with the autopsy report, I believe. The defendant made to strangle his victim, then changed his mind and chose a simpler, blunter means to do the job. Yes, that sums it up nicely. So he strangled him, then hit him. Something's fishy about all of this. Go ahead, I believe you know what it is you need to do. Yeah, so Phoenix could have, like, strangled him a little, you know, like, <laughs> strangled him a little, and then Phoenix could have left, and somebody else could have whacked him over the head and killed him. I, I mean, that's just assuming that Orly isn't literally lying about all of this. Wait, where's the pendant? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a freaking minute. Wait a minute. Okay, is he wearing the pendant? He is wearing the pendant in this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see what you're putting down. Rookie mistake. Oh, shit. Present, present. Objection! Your Honor, what? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about when sometimes you like, you like get one step ahead of them too early. Yeah, Phoenix is wearing a, a pendant. Phoenix, why are you wearing the pendant that the victim was wearing? What is he doing? Wait, did I, I, no, I didn't, oh, I presented the wrong picture. That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that's why. But 
Come on. I sh Come on. Be for real. Objection! You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said, but what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on a locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Doom! Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. Thanks. I'm just... It's just the tutorial. Kristoff, thank you, though. I knew you'd be able to handle this. What does it mean? If you're to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. That phoenix is wearing now! What are you fucking doing, bro? Phoenix is just playing. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off. Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! Uh. Ah? Uh. Ah? Uh. What? De defendant, what do you have to say to this? Come on, bro. That's... Am I crazy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why are you looking so smug? He's just a funny guy. Say. I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh? You mean this? Yeah, it's a locket with a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. Phoenix is a dad! Wait. Maybe that's maybe it's a, the victim's daughter. But what if what if Phoenix is a dad? C come again, Mr. Wright? You have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. He actually has a daughter now. So Mr. Wright has a locket too. Apollo. Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? And an ex-wife? Dude, I wonder if he has, like, two ex-wives. <clears throat> well, now if the results of the poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It is clear that the defendant lost. Badly. Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. Yeah, his hat does say Papa. Oh, that's cute. Wait. Tata. The game began with 3,500 points in chips. House chips come in two sizes, small and large. The one who was winning, da, it was Victor. For the last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment the loss was decided, defendant grabs bottom from table and Well, now you're now you're lying. Now you're making shit up. Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Dude, she's messing up her testimony. What's going on? Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, how many times have I heard these words? I've done it in a fit of anger, Your Honor, and now I regret what I have done. A common tale, but true. Me thinks Apollo. Mr. Wright says he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. <laughs> oh, he's so innocent. He's an actual, like, nerd glasses emoji, yeah. Are those the usual starting points? Were there any special rules? No, not special. Usual game, usual rules. Each man began with 3,500 points, and the total would be... Um... Exactly six. No, 7,000 points. Please, this isn't calculus. It's not even long division. 
house chips come in two sizes, small and large. Hold it! Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Is it? Do I have to do, like, math? Da. Da! Of course! Huh? Something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? Yeah! Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. Explain? What is there to be explained? <laughs> poker chips are poker chips. They're not fish and chips. Not a chip off the old block, not a motorcycle, not a... Now that I've pressed her, I better ask something. What are these chips worth? Are they in dollars or rubles even? Yet, as I've been saying before, it was game, not gambling. Part perhaps for capitalists to understand! <laughs> Two types of chip. 100 point chip and 1000 point chip. It is not enough. That. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Don't you find her comments interesting? In more ways than one, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add to her testimony? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Add it to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. I know where you're going with this. The math is wrong. It, the math doesn't math. Very well, witness, if you would be so kind. Stop, your honor. Okay, we're gonna press her on the other things, but, um... I think the math doesn't math. I'm assuming the small... Mm, if each one had 3,500... Okay, so that is like, that is 6,000, and that, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait, the math does math! Well, shit. <laughs> Wait, but the math maths. Well, okay, I could have them backwards. We need to clarify which ones are worth what. I think. Can we press this? Mr. Gavin said this testimony is important. To be honest, I have no idea why. Mr. Justice, do the court a favor and think of what you want to say before raising your hand. We are not in kindergarten. Ah, sorry, I'm fine. Because she'd never clarified if the big chips or the small chips were worth more. Uh, the two types of chips. Da? Um, the small ones are a hundred and the big ones a thousand. Uh, right? Right, of course. Ha! <laughs> Don't waste our time. <sighs> Is that all? Uh, yeah! Oh. <laughs> Great, so Gavin made me stop her, and I'm the, I'm the one who looks dumb. You don't look dumb! Oh, Justice? Please try not to embarrass me like that. Huh? Who? Me? There's a clear contradiction in the information. Yeah, 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 yeah. The big, if the big ones are a thousand, then the math is completely wrong. It's a simple matter of calculation. Go on, try it. We're not in kindergarten after all. I just assumed that the small ones were worth more because there was less of them. There's like multiple contradictions here, but we'll just like, we'll just like... The math... Oh, hold on, hold on. Maybe this is the one I have to contradict. Objection! You're sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure? Objection! It seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at the picture is enough to tell you who won. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. If you're not in kindergarten. Uh, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problems of the court? Of course, your honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth 1,000 points? Why, the big ones, of course. Duh. Oh, I thought so too. But then the totals don't add up. 
the, the totals. Let's review what the witness told us. Each man started with 3,500 points in chips, and then the combined total of the chips was 7,000 points. Yes, if my calculations are correct, let's see. 3 plus 1, carry the 5. Uh, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo. That allegedly shows all of the chips. The totals. The totals. If the big chips are worth a thousand points, and the small chips are worth a hundred, and you add them up, how much is it? Do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? Ten thousand six hundred points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. But why? How could this be? Exactly. Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Right. There's only one possible way to under to explain this contradiction. Uh. Um. Both were wrong. Yes. Yes. Each man began the game with 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can only be one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. What? Wanna know what I think? The small chips were worth a thousand points, not the big ones! Madness! Utter madness! <laughs> Show me the photograph of the chips again. There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why, that does make 7,000 points when you add them up. Excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. OBJECTION! But wait! The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing. Indeed, the victim did have the larger number of chips still. Ah! Exactly. If the small chips are a thousand points and the larger chips are a hundred, let's do a little math. Add up the points for each side of the table. Uh, ah! <laughs> the victim, Mr. Smith, had... Phoenix had 4,100 points, so Phoenix was winning. Well now, it seems that Mr. Wright was winning that night after all. That's impossible! My client had even less reason to kill the victim. After all... He was winning! Yarg! Now, Miss Orly, you must have known the true value of the chips, since you were there at the scene of the crime. Weren't you? <laughs> it appears our defendant has lost his motive, and Mr. Wright's supposed defeat never happened. We must now ask ourselves whether we can trust the witness's testimonies. Excuse me? What is it, Miss Orly? I, I did not want to be saying this, but actually, you see, um... See what, Miss Orly? What do we see? In the last hand, there was cheat. Uh, a cheat? You, you don't mean... A trick? Wait, or do you mean... A scam? They're all the same thing! Yes, there was cheat in last hand. That is why game ends with chips as they are. Great, just great. First we have lying, now cheating. Well, in this case, certainly a safe return. Pretty interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating <gasps> in the final hand. <laughs> cheating and gambling? No! To last hand, both men had full house. Oh, right. I'm not allowed to press yet. There is four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment, game becomes argument done. The defendant's trick was exposed. He took a bottle in his hand for Mr. Smith. Miss 
Orly? Why did you not tell the court about this from the very beginning? I thought I smelled a cover-up here. <clears throat> well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm, a full house is a very high-scoring hand. Guys, we don't... I see people, like, discussing what happened to Phoenix. Guys, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. He's hard on his luck right now, I think. Probably. Not easy to make it in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect a less than scrupulous tactics. Um, Mr. Gabby? <laughs> What's a full house? <laughs> Lawyers these days, you don't know your poker. I can't see this bodes well for your case or career. What is this, some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice, you know the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes. Uh, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number makes a pair, and three makes three of a kind. Good, now picture a hand with one pair and one three of a kind. That's a full house. Hmm, that doesn't make it, that doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? You could see each player's hand in this photo. Both of them had full houses, yeah. But theirs is like, way higher. What the fuck? What the fuck? Wait, okay, hang on. Okay, I'm not seeing any. <clears throat> we forget there's an easy way to make a full house and go undefeated for seven years. We cheat. The defense may cross-examine the witness. If he did cheat in the last hand, that still leaves one important question. Mr. Wright lost that hand. Who's ever heard of a professional con man losing when they can cheat? Well, maybe, maybe the other, maybe the other person is cheating. Also. <laughs> so last hand, both men had full house. There is four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheaters will be obvious. Next moment, game becomes argument. Stop. The defendant's trick was exposed. He took bottle in hand for Mr. Smith. Me, um... <clears throat> let me look. Let me, let me take a little look-see here. Let me take a little look-see. What am I looking at exactly? A photo. Why is this one like different though? Is that from a different deck? I'm not seeing the issue. It might be from a different deck. Fucking squints really hard. Does that look like an ace of spades? I mean, it, it could be an ace, <laughs> I guess. It, it kind of looks more like a, a stretched out C. Also be a, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know gang there could be two things in this photo that are weird um hmm yeah I was looking at the one on the floor chat yeah and I saw a heart at the bottom left but there wasn't any details on it are these are these in like maybe a different font no they're not if that's supposed to be an ace, that's, uh, that's, that's blurry as hell. Maybe we can ask them to zoom and enhance. Hold it! 
Four of each card, you say. Duh. That is one spade, one diamond, one heart. One club, four of each card. It is interesting the fact that this number four comes from number of seasons. Ah, huh, you don't say. Ah, and did you know that the cards are numbered one through thirteen? Uh, add all the cards in a deck and you get 364. A year. Huh, you don't say. Is that one day short? <laughs> That's why each deck has two jokers. They say the second joker stands for the leap year. Is this true? Huh. Thus you have a perfect representation of the year, all on a deck of cards. Ah, oh, you don't say. <laughs> We're gonna be in this courtroom for a year. If you look at both men's hands, cheats is more obvious. Hold it! How was it clear? Da, well, the defendant, he played the fifth ace. What? When? A, a fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Is it the one that is different? Mr. Wright's two. Wait. Wait, am I stupid? <laughs> wait, am I stupid? Wait, 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 what? Huh? Wait, huh? No, that's not right. Two. One, two. Huh? What? She's lying. Huh? Obviously cheating was afoot, or perhaps should I say a hand. Your Honor, perhaps this can be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. She has something- yeah, she has something confused. Uh, no, that's- that's wrong. It is five aces in total. Yeah, she must have... That's weird. That's very weird. What is she up to? Is she just confused? Objection! Evening. It appears the witness is mistaken. Mistaken? But my name... Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. That's the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice, perhaps you ought to explain your point in a way that the judge can comprehend. In other words, use your finger to point out your point. Yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. What particular point contradicts the witness testimony? She said that, like, there was three aces on this side, right? Should I just point to one of the kings, then? Take that! Miss Orly, your testimony made the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand only held two aces. Maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that held the third ace. Why are we, why are we discussing this? There are four aces on the table. That is technically possible. As you can see, the defendant also had two aces in his hand. Where's this fifth ace? I see cheating, all right, and it's going on right here in this courtroom. <laughs> yeah, tell him, tell him to follow. Two aces in each player's hand does not does make four aces in total. Hardly proof of cheating. Wait, please. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating. I swear to you. That's odd. She must be lying, yet yeah, she's the most sincere. I've seen her all day. Yeah, that's what- she isn't lying. I think she did see it, but then, um, then I think maybe the hands got changed after the crime. Do we have a photo of the back of the cards? You're right to trust your instincts. Mr. Gavin! <laughs> Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead. Your Honor, if I may, I have a suggestion. What might that be, Mr. Gavin? You don't mind. Perhaps we should examine the actual cards. Yes, thank you. I would like to look at the backs. Er, uh, yes? The player's hands that night were set aside as evidence, were they not? The defendant would like to request that the cards be shown to the court. Very well, the prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? Uh, fuck. I don't remember. Which one did she say? Uh... Can't I examine both? Because <clears throat> it was fucking, uh... 
Yeah, they were like... that. Yeah, that was like incorrect, so they had to have been swapped out, maybe. Yeah, it changed over the course of the witness's testimony. That's what I'm saying. It changed, but that means somebody could have put like a red card in it. The defense requests time to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Very well, Mr. Payne, if you would. Very well. Well, time's a wasting. Get to it, Justice. Yes, sir! When you examine the evidence, make sure to view it from all sides and angles. Yay! Yay! Rotating! Uh, fuck, how do I rotate? <laughs> Wait, how do I- Yay! Blue! Wh what? Get rotated, idiot. Your Honor! Look at this! What are the victim's cards? The back is a different color! How did you guys not see this? Does that seem possible? But I put that- G Olga! What did you just say? <laughs> what was that, Miss Orly? N yes uh, I merely said, uh, I have. Your Honor? Mr. Gavin, yes? Tell me, what is the easiest way to cheat at poker? To cheat? I'll tell you, one merely needs a friend. A comrade, shall we say. The dealer. Ah. Ah! Wait, so you mean... This witness, Miss Orly. She's the cheater. A professional, I'd wager. Focus justice, time to take advantage of her- I, <laughs> I mean, her mistake! Your Honor, please recall the testimony we just heard! Apollo, please. <laughs> Since that's impossible, but I put that card in Mr. Wright's hand. Ergo, Miss Olga Orly conspired to cheat, not with my client, but with the victim, Mr. Shady Smith! Not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly. Therefore, it's not hard to imagine an alternative between her and the victim. What? Wait, you don't mean. The defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orly, are you? <laughs> Your Honor, League of Legends! <laughs> time for justice! There were three people in the room at the time of the incident. And if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, then that means... I am! Ready! The defense accuses the witness, Miss Olga Orly, of murder. <coughs> Mr. Payne, where's your witness, Miss Olga Orly? Um, it appears she has lost uh, consciousness, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Justice, Your Honor. It seems you presented a new possibility to the court. One suggesting a connect connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means... This court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. <laughs> what? I did it. I held out. Good, good job, Apollo. Baby's first case. I see no point in prolonging this trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. Objection! What? Who? What? Huh? Phoenix? <laughs> M Mr. Wright? You can't end the trial here, Your Honor. <clears throat> Not yet. What nonsense is the defendant spewing now? Think, one of the cards had a different colored back. Don't you wonder what it means? Objection! Objection! What are you doing, Mr. Wright? Raising objections right when you're about to get off the hook? Ridiculous. Mr. Payne, you of all people should know, Mr. Wright has the talent for the ridiculous. He's so cool. <laughs> Phoenix is so cool. <laughs> Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about the game that fateful night. As was said before, we alternated, alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was said before. 
The two decks at the club have different colored backs. Blue and red. One color per deck. Why use different colored backs? If we use the same color, the two decks might get mixed. Um, you used different colors and they still got mixed up. We used the red deck for the last game. Hmm, I see, but that's odd. For some reason, I have this impression that you were using the blue cards. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Yeah, huh. I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Whatever, in the end, one card of the wrong color got into the mix. Which means there was cheating. Yes, a card slipped into the deck would seem to indicate cheating. Yet, this card raises two serious questions. Apollo? Y yeah Let's consider the first question, shall we? Think. In the last game, when was the card swap? When? There are three bo broad possibilities here. It could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah, thanks for the news bulletin, Mr. Wright. Of course, it was swap- Oh? It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Payne, or it might not be. Yeah. I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. When do you think the cards were swapped? I don't know. Hang on. Can I see the cards from- that, That's too- That's too aces. I mean, this looks like the ones in the picture, so- yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I was thinking maybe there could be a chance that this photo was taken before the cards were swapped, but not really. Mm. Notify the police from the first floor. I think it had to have been after the murder, right? It had to have been after the- like, it had to have been after the murder. Yeah, I know the cards that were presented in the evidence were blue. So why are they all red here? Why- why are they all red? Why are they all red, though? Because all of the- I think, like, even if I looked at the other hand, they would probably all be red. But they said that the last deck they were playing with was blue. They said the last hand was red? Fuck, but who said blue? I'm lost in the sauce. I'm lost in the sauce, boys. Alright, Phoenix. When was the card swapped into the deck? I think it had to have been after the murder. Am I wrong? What's that? Ridiculous. What's the point of cheating after the hands have been shown? That's silly. Objection! Yes, but tell me. How do you swap cards during the game? I'll take silly over impossible. Take it from me, son. There's a lot of silly in this world, but very little impossible. <laughs> Light cigarette. There's a lot of silly in this world. <laughs> Even when the backs of the cards are a different color? If you pulled that during the game, you'd be caught in no time. Yeah, because they can see your hand. That would mean the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown, after the murder. Okay, this is going... <laughs> This is going past silly and straight on to crazy. I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would do that? Who indeed? That's one of the mysteries before us. There's another. Yes, a simple yet decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? Th who? The game and murder is done, the victim is dead. Only two remain in the room. Alive, that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and her witness, Olga. I mean, Olga put the card in. She did that, but why? It must have been Olga or Lee who swapped the card. She was trying to cover up the evidence of the cheating. That does make some sense. Sorry. But there's a problem with that explanation. Huh? Swap card was from the wrong deck. 
Yeah, a blue card was stuck into a red hand. Mixing a card from the wrong deck when the backs are different colors. Remember that you're talking about Olga Orly. She was a dealer. Right, she was a professional. She was a professional cheater. Do you really think she would make such a novice mistake? Actually, I have trouble imagining even the judge making that mistake. Give it a little more thought, Apollo. Right? Everyone is so nice to me. <laughs> is fe I, I have suspected from the beginning that Phoenix is intentionally leaving like a weird trail for himself. So I, I'm almost kind of suspicious that Phoenix was the one who did it. It had to have been either of them. No, he wouldn't make the same fuck up. I'm saying maybe he did it on purpose. Like he knew it would be obvious. It's like sus as fuck. Like Phoenix is being super fucking sus. Whatever, it's not like they're gonna punish me during the tutorial. Okay, music is still going. Why would I do such a thing? Uh, well, <laughs> you're sus. <laughs> Okay, I guess maybe there was a- it could have been someone else, I guess. There, there was no evidence of anyone else being there, ever. Sorry, I'm a nice guy, but I'm not that nice. Come to think of it, he would lack a motive for helping his opponent win. The one who swapped the cards wasn't Mr. Wright, of course. And, well, it doesn't seem like it could have been Olga either. What are you suggesting? It's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. Okay, but my weird, like, Phoenix theory wasn't logical either. <laughs> As the defense, I think it would only make sense for you to name Miss Orly at this point. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... But she was the one who dealt the cards, right? I, I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. And the card was swapped during the game, it'd be obvious. <laughs> Something you'd like to share with the class? Oh, my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking about how much fun this all is. Attention! Fun? How about confusing? I have no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor. If the one who swapped the card wasn't the defendant and it wasn't Miss Orly, then who was it? Er, yeah, well, that is the question, isn't it? Precisely. Huh? I believe we're about to see this case take. A new direction. A new direction. We'll find that, indeed, after the murder. Someone swapped one of the cards in the victim's hand. And that someone made two critical mistakes. I'm sure you're going to tell us that the first was swapping the wrong color card. Because the one who did the swap didn't know two colors of cards were being used. Could they have been colorblind? Like, is that a ridiculous idea? <laughs> the other mistake was the number on the card. Right, the person replaced the fifth face with the king. I'm sure whoever swapped it wasn't expecting there to be a fifth ace, as they're all. All they knew was that the game had been won with a full house. So they picked up a king from the table and swapped it in. Okay, I guess it could have, yeah, if all the cards were laying flat on the table or on the floor, like they might not have even flipped it over to see the color. It might have been just, but that's weird. Why would somebody walk in and just swap in a card for no fucking reason? Be like, hmm, this hand is wrong. According to our case record, this person doesn't exist. True, not until now, but you have to admit the possibility of a fourth person. You would do that? <laughs> so it's more than a possibility. There was someone else there that night at the scene of the crime. What? I believe the judge spoke truthfully earlier. You do make trials ridiculous, Mr. Wright. Oh, wait. Okay, I have like a weird crackpot theory, but let me... Let me, let me, let me let, let, let it play out. <laughs> this trial has preceded one central assumption. Namely, that at the time of the incident, there were only three people in that room. 
I believe this new evidence, shall we say, overturns that assumption? The problem is that you chose to conceal this information from the court. I suppose that is a problem, yes. Hey, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay, okay, okay. This is my weird crackpot theory, okay? Um, there's been, like, a lot of, like, weird foreshadowing uh, where Kristoff has been, like, hey, don't fuck this one up. Don't fuck this one up. Don't, like, don't fuck this one up. Like, we'll be, we'll be in trouble if you fuck this one up. Uh, and also, Kristoff keeps on pushing me to accuse Olga of the murder. So I think maybe... I, I don't think it was literally Kristoff, but I think he's... I think he might be in involved or getting us involved in order to like like groom me into covering up for someone that would like not even be the craziest thing this game series has done okay all right all right here we go <clears throat> court has is adjourned for a brief recess phoenix also said something about that guys groom can mean a bunch of different different things okay I'll see you in my chambers during this recess. Certainly, your honor. What the fuck? He's going to meet the judge now. Very well. The trial will resume in 20 minutes. What's going on? That was quite unexpected, Mr. Wright. Yeah, he's about to scold me for not accusing Olga to suddenly claim there was another person at the scene of the crime like that. I must ask, is it the truth? Well now, I think you I I think you would know the answer to that. Ah, being mysterious, are we? Sadly, I have no time for mysteries. I'd only ask that you leave the defending to your defense in the future. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the outcome. I see you haven't mellowed out one bit, Kristoff. Justice. Y yes sir! The judge has summoned me to his chambers, so carry on without me. Okay, maybe not. Maybe that was a weird- it was like too much of a crackpot theory. Maybe. But, it, but if I'm right, I'm gonna like fist pump really hard. <laughs> you did well, Apollo. Um, uh, can I ask you something? Sure. That locket you wear. Is that really yours, Mr. Wright? Ah, you're wondering about the victim's disappearing locket. Here, you can take a look at it. That's a picture of my daughter in there. Or is it Maya? What the fuck? Who is that? I'm just surprised to hear you had a daughter. I know that, like... Huh. She's, yeah, she's a little magician. That's cute. Most people are. Perhaps you'll meet her one of these days. One more question. The one who cheated that night, was it you? What do you think? Huh? You know what happened seven years ago. What I did. It's not unreasonable for you to think I might cheat. Oh no! Phoenix, no! What did you do? I- I never, honest, but... It is odd that he managed to go undefeated for seven whole years. Wanna know something? There's only one game where you can be dealt bad cards all night and still win. Poker. Huh? You see, poker's all about reading your opponent. And that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker is like trial law! <laughs> Figure out what your opponent is thinking, and you win. Well, yeah, but that's harder than it sounds. I think not. Try as they might conceal it, everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Their body language can become a valuable source of information. You're kidding. <laughs> that witness, for instance, Miss Orly. She would touch the back of her hand, head, or neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? I actually didn't. Uh, no. Words, habits, switches. It's all information for the reading. That's the secret to winning, Apollo. 
someone taught me, and now I pass the secret on to you. But I'm not worthy! <laughs> I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No, you can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What's he talking about? But you will. Soon. Ah, almost forgot. One more thing. About this case. You should know, I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it! I have my reasons, of course. All shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there. Defend me. I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. <laughs> it's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. Yay! I knew you were fucking lying, Phoenix. I knew you're the smug piece of shit. He's up to something. He's up to something. He's scheming. What's he doing? <clears throat> he lied under oath? What the fuck? So honestly, sounds like he did worse than lie under oath. I mean, he did something seven years ago that made him become not an attorney anymore. So... Like, he lost his license, is what it sounds out. What it, what it sounds like. <clears throat> Court will now recap. Has our witness, Miss Olga Orly, recovered? Yes, Your Honor. Er, well, she's regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear her version of the events again. That's the thing. You see, she's quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Mr. Payne. Sadly, fatigue is insufficient grounds for refusing to testify or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Miss Orly take the stand. Very well, the witness will take the stand. Is she gonna have a special tired sprite? No, I guess not. Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession? Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poorer loser? <laughs> not. What?! Huh? Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is she still- she is still Russian. Name's Olga Orly. That's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quick Fingers Orly. <laughs> it was a ruse. It was a ruse, chat. Oh. Oh, really? Want to know something else? I'm not- I'm not really Russian, and my last name sounds like, oh, really? There, that's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. Witness, you will tell the court what you were really up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan. See. Let me remind you that you are currently under oath. <laughs> Any further fabrications will serious. I fucking love it when Ace Attorney does shit like this. <laughs> Fine. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy, Smith, hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Borsch Bull Club several nights prior to the game of the night. As a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim. Not that he needed my help. Smith is a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend. The unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search for- He looks a little too happy about that. He would then pull out the planted card, and the trap would snap shut. You swapped out the cards. Exposed as a cheater and losing on top of it, it would have made a great double play. Just like that, the legend would be dashed into pieces. Indeed. Getting caught red-handed at cheating would cast doubt on all his prior wins. A seven-year legend destroyed by one little card. That was the plan. She kind of, she kind of bad. She's kind of a baddie. <laughs>
Oh, really? Oh, really? How droll. But it appears you made quite the mistake. A mistake? I agree, the trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right! He's lucky, I'll give him that. You'd have to be... You'd have to be... You'd have to be to slip free from a trap laid by Olga Quickfingers O'Reilly. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dispensed with the evil mastermind shtick. Cute? Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad. You hear me? Bad! <laughs> she is bad. She is a baddie. When you're through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court. Tell us about this chat. It's not literally me, chat. It's not literally me. <laughs> that night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. It wasn't me who hit Smith. It was that no good cheating defendant. Hmm. A surprisingly frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you, perfect if that rotten cheater hadn't messed it up. Look who's talking! Well, the testimony, for what it's worth, is all yours, Mr. Justice. With witnesses like her, who needs criminals? And with defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. I want to know how. <clears throat> this planted card. Which card was it exactly? The trump card. The five of hearts. Let me guess. Mr. Wright was to have it switched with the five of the... With the... The... Ah! Switch with the five of eight to make a full house. At least... That's what you were going to accuse him of doing, thereby ruining his legend. I slid it into Mr. Wright's pocket. When was this? Why, before the match, of course. While he was eating. Huh. At the Bush Bowl Club, we serve Bush and suckers. Remind me to never go there. Have I been drinking? What? No. Oh, you mean, like, water? Maybe I should. Hang on. <laughs> Actually, I was drinking gamer juice. Red raspberry today. Hydrate before you die, Drake chat. Of course, the card was to make its grand debut during the game. Like a good borscht, a good plot must be cooked up early and allowed to thicken. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. Hold it! So everything went according to plan. Exactly. The fifth ace came up, so it's obvious that the switch went off without a hitch. Once the extra card was found in his pocket... Right would be forever known as a cheat and fraud. There are worse things to be known as, I suppose. Tell us what happened with the search. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Hold it! The card disappeared? Yeah, my trump card, the five of hearts. Gone. Without a trace. Poof. Zippo. We searched every nook and cranny, even inside his cute little hat. But the card was nowhere to be found, is this correct? Never in my long storied career, never has quick fingered fingers oh really been so readily duped. Oh, really? So when did this happen to that five of hearts? Don't look at me. Why don't you ask that cheating, lying, two faced de defendant? Defendant? Fuck! So the Five of Hearts is still missing in action. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. Hold it! Wait, isn't that a little odd? Well, what's odd? You searched Mr. Wright, er, thoroughly and found nothing? 
Which means he didn't cheat, which means he had no reason to strike the victim. W well Oh. Ooh. What was that? I sensed something. Something wrong, Mr. Justice? N no, nothing, Your Honor. Apollo's having a heart attack. <laughs> Miss O'Reilly, you're hiding something. W what are you talking about? You, you, m m me? Quick fingers, O'Reilly, to hide something? The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have one question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's the truth. I did see it. She stutters when she's lying. I saw it when Wright hit him. Or maybe she touches her hair. Or maybe she does both. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? That witness, for instance, Miss O'Reilly. She would touch the back of her neck during her- Yeah, she's still doing it. I guess I got confused, chat, because it's like a different person now. <laughs> I got like thrown off. Touching her neck, was it? Uh. Uh. Whoa, what's going on? This sensation, this power. <laughs> it's coming into focus. There, that twitch, it's so clear. It's like I could perceive her habit like I couldn't before. Gotcha! Miss O'Reilly, perhaps you are unaware of this yourself? Uh, unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. Yeah, Phoenix told you this, Apollo. This is not your original idea. My, my neck? So, so what? What indeed, Justice? I hadn't noticed anything of the sort. When she says that part of her testimony, She's subconsciously recalling something. Her body reacts to the memory and she touches her neck. I'm sure of it. A memory? Would someone care to explain what he's babbling about? This is highly unusual, but let's ask the defense. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us. Her habit is scratching her neck whenever she talks about this moment of the crime. So, what would remind her most of the moment of the crime? Miss O'Reilly, whenever you recall the crime that night, you scratch your neck. I've noticed it happens when you think about the moment of the crime. There must be some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an inerasable impression on your... The weapon that left an irreplaceable impression on your neck is this? Huh? What? Huh? What? Huh? What? Wait, they don't, they don't want me to, they don't want me to, the badge will save us, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <clears throat> could it, could she have used the cell phone to call it in? I mean, like, okay, I know there's like a big difference between like what a man and a woman would sound like. But Phoenix called the police. Well, they said Phoenix's phone was used to call the police. Yeah, let's look at pictures of this dead guy. Just for fun. Yep, is that what you wanted, chat? Talking about weapons. Well, yeah, I know they're talking about weapons. It, it doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense, but it's like the only thing I have. So Whenever she talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. And what reminds us more of that moment than this weapon, this bottle, the murder weapon? But something doesn't fit. If you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? What's he talking about now? 
It was Mr. Smith, the victim, who was hit, not you. Uh, oh. This is a cross-examination, not a wild cross-conjecture. The witnesses have it. They're completely irrelevant. Justice, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain later. Just trust me. Now's our only chance to break her. He does have a smoochable forehead. Mr. Early, please testify in detail about the moment of the crime. The very moment. Nyat, I am knowing nothing. Uh, we know you're not Russian. <laughs> the witness will testify. Please, now. Bah, fine. He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. Hold it! You seem uneasy. You try standing up here. Your eyes are darting all over the place. I must be getting warm. Tell me, after the crime, what was the defendant like? Uh, well... He must have been stunned by the weight of his crime. He sat in a daze at the table until the cops came. Intriguing. I believe you've gotten all the testimony. <gasps> You're going to get out of this witness. So, what do you think about her testimony? I'll tell you what I think. Her testimony is... Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. Yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he called the cops. D didn't she? If she had her hair... Hit, hit, fuck. Had her eyes on him the entire time, she would have seen him call the cops. Yeah, it was flawed. It's basically bogus. It contradicts the evidence. Well, what's that? Shows the evidence, Mr. Justice. This is evidence that you claim contradicts the testimony. She didn't let him out of her sight until the cops got there. I know there's some evidence that contradicts that. This was made from the first floor. Call was made from the first floor. Uh. Take that! Yeah. Miss O'Reilly, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you just said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. Eh. And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Ah. Focus, Vincent. So explain how you kept your eye on the defendant when he left the room entirely. Ah! A lobster? Hello? Get a little lobster back there. Little boy. The man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. Was it you, Olga? Did you do it? Did you do the murder? Why? Showdown time. You dirty cheat. Check his pockets now. Wait, fuck. It's gone. The card's gone. Lose. I don't know who's talking. Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right, and he hit me. Some master cheating you turned out to be. Okay. When I came to, the victim was already dead. Is that it? Huh. That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If I came out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Mmm, that's sus. That's sus. What the fuck? Okay, so first of all, all of this is sus. Um, Phoenix's prints were on the bottle. One. Two. <laughs> Who the fuck would have killed him? <laughs> <clears throat> well, where does this leave us? M madness. This is madness. I'm dreaming. 
It must have been me who was hit with a bottle, and I'm imagining all of this. It appears a prosecution is at his wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? M Mr. Gavin, sir? I believe that, as the defense in this case, we are compelled to call Miss Aureli a big, fat liar. What? There were three in that room the night of the murder, the defendant, victim, and her, and she has a motive. A motive? The plot foiled, the witness got into an argument with her client, Mr. Smith. And the denouement of that argument was murder. What? I didn't. I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. Denouement? Denouement? Oh, right. This guy is French. <laughs> what tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. So tangled we catch ourselves in the process. Mr. Wright? Such a hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Christoph Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Right, like Mr. Wright was saying before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder. And the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used. A fourth person. We've gotta be covering up for somebody. Right? This theory again, your fourth person doesn't exist. Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to, case to court. Here, where there's no escape and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The, the real criminal? And we're in luck. A clue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. W what? Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. No, no, I don't. What is, what's going on? Um, sorry. Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color on the backs of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game were red. Yes. There is one person here, in our court, who thought those cards were blue. Right. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? People, people were saying that Gavin said that the cards were blue at the beginning of the case. But that was such a little detail that I did not fucking even think about it. Well, Apollo, think you can figure out who it was? It's not me, I swear. Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards... Come on! Like, okay, so in my defense, even though I didn't remember him saying that, I do think Gavin is being sus as fuck. I do think Kristoff has been being super sus about this the whole time. And like pushing me to accuse oh really when this like when we weren't ready. <clears throat> Take that! As expected, your eyes and ears are just as sharp as your hair. But I was right? Christoph Gavin, you were the fourth person that night. But, but of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue, the ones on the floor, or the table. B but look! You can see the colors in this photo! Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. Oh yeah, that is weird. Huh. Oh yeah, he didn't- huh. <laughs> It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game, in the purest sense. Competition, Your Honor. Competition? 
Yes, the test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, reads, and blue flip. Yeah, why did you say that shit, Kristoff? Come on, man. Well, Kristoff? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, is something the matter? Hmm? No, nothing. Excuse me, it was just so sudden. Right. You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff? You know even I'd never take a joke this far. What's going on between these two? They were in the room together. Huh. Now he's defending him. Weird. Very weird. Very strange. This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? <laughs> yeah, that is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, they definitely explore each other's bodies. No, I'm a fuck- I'm a- I'm a right worth shipper, okay? <laughs> what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith, either. If somebody told said that to me, I'd kill myself in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> After exploring each other's bodies! Oh, wait, wait, oh, oh, sorry, I got it confused. I thought he said Mr. Um, Gavin. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Ah. There's a possibility, after all. They may have met that night before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you Objection. testify to the court. The defense would like to request no such thing. <sighs> Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening before the game of poker be related? Let's say, hypothetically, for the sake of argument. <laughs> I'm not sure if I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss O'Reilly... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He is the defense, not you. Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Yes! This was Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along. Oh my god, Apollo is being, like, groomed by two different senior attorneys. And, and no, I don't mean, like, I, I mean, like, the other meaning of that word. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. Et oh fuck, I don't I don't know anything about French people. Justice? You would betray me, your teacher? I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin, this is now about loyalty. This is about the truth. This is about justice! Oh, that's Latin. Oh, Lamau. Very well, the defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. <clears throat> That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead. Blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call. To defense attorney Gavin. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Uh-uh. Phoenix, you're lying. You were at the Borsch Bowl Club the night of the murder? I dined with him rather frequently. And he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder. Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want 
is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. Sir! He's lying. And you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright. This can't end well. Why can't I have an... <laughs> Why can't... <laughs> Please let this be a normal field trip. <laughs> Okay, so here's the problem, chat. I don't even think I need to examine this guy. I just need to do this. Oh, fuck. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I gave him the wrong thing. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I know it's, like, basically the same thing. Um, I just, like, presented a similar piece of evidence instead of the one I was supposed to. Objection! There we go. Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think that you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. <laughs> ah, got me. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Ah, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Ah, you... You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it through our entire poker night game. Poker game. After calling the police, when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. And? I picked his hat up off the floor and put it on his head. <laughs> Why do you do a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. <laughs> But that's the only thing I touched the crime scene. <laughs> yeah, I tamper with the crime scene. Sorry. So, Miss O'Reilly didn't see it? It being the victim's, er, his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem, <clears throat> pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. He, hey, he's still our client, isn't he? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Ugh, why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? All right, let's push him, I guess. Push him a little. Well, let's see what that, what happened to that dialogue. Okay, so this is weird, right? There's like a lot of contradictions, uh, contradictions here somewhere. Please! It says it has Phoenix's fingerprints on it! Okay. They are related. They are related. They're related. They are related. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could press, but I, I thought this was, like, enough. Enough to be like, that's wrong. It was your fingerprints on the bottle. <sighs> I, I, I thought I wouldn't need to. About this failed trap. This is the same trap that Miss Olga O'Reilly mentioned? The plan was simple. Elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand. 
and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search right. He would then pull out the planted card, and the snap would trap shut. You swapped out the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed into pieces. Yes, we've seen this. Yeah, a harmless prank in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hands in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted. Yeah, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the five parts. I had a feeling that something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? Oh, there was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right next to me. I threw the card inside the bottle? An empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon? Uh, so... Uh... Yep, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm. A battle of wits between the deceiver and would-be deceived. That sounds like terrific drama. A card inside the murder weapon? That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Please revise your testimony with this new information. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the hell? Hey, there ain't no card in this bottle, Phoenix. Wear the card. We're card, but we're card, Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, we're card, though. Objection! What? Why am I taking damage from this? It clearly. Hey, why am I taking. Huh? Do I need to press him again? Look harder, Bozo. Oh, shit. Maybe... Maybe I did, like, maybe it was stuck to the side and I just didn't see. Yeah, it's definitely not in here, chat. There's no card in here. Zoom? What the- stop- stop one-guying me. Like, there's no card in it. Stop! <laughs> okay, fine. Why in the box? I perceived my opponent's intent immediately. I used entrapment, you see. I knew what was coming. Oh, oh, so you struck first. I like that. Like that. We like that. <laughs> I know every trick in the book. They don't work on me. At least when you get lucky and stick your hand in your pocket, they don't. Hang on, chat. Yeah, it's on his side, isn't it? Ain't it? Ain't it? Ain't it? Enhance. Huh. <clears throat> Both of these photos show the bottle on the victim's side. So which one am I supposed to present? Objection! Okay, I'm I, I'm I'm being too smart for the game. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I guess we just need to- let's just press it. it! You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor at the time? No, guys, the card isn't in the background either. No, I'll show you, chat. Oh, 
Okay, so there's like a spade here and there's a heart here. We do not know that this is the five of hearts. And even if we did, I presented it during the the thing where like that would have been able to contradict it. You have to click on the bottle? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Okay, you guys don't know how this game works. <laughs> they only let you do like the pick what's wrong uh, in like certain situations. You can't just do it every time. Wait, when you are looking at the bottle to click it? Uh, oh, what? here. <laughs> hey guys! The bottle's completely empty. Oh, okay. That was what I needed to do. Come on! Come on! That's dumb. Oh well, sometimes this just happens. <laughs> okay. Alright, maybe now we try presenting that, because you definitely, like, now that we've verified that it's actually empty, I thought if we visualized that it was empty, like, that would be enough, you know? See, like, the description didn't even change. Oh, well. Oh, uh, we might die. Let's see what happens. Objection! Uh, Mr. Wright, if I may? Yeah? I've examined the bottle, and I don't see any card in here. Hmm? No? What? Mr. Wright, surely dot 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 isn't all you have to say for yourself. I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I wouldn't have you disparaging our investigation, either. We looked inside that bottle. There was nothing. So what's going on? Does Mr. Wright hoodwink you guys again? Or did the car just disappear? I believe that's enough of that. Um, uh, Mr. Gavin? His witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm begging, beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Boy, these guys have history. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, they have history. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell us the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Eh? When I noticed the trap, put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say that I had a reason for doing that as well. Uh, a reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night? Recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case, I recorded our call. Yay, new evidence! What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? What's this? Game not going well! <laughs> Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good. He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him. Hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china pate? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please. These cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Oh, bone china plate? I could have sworn it said pate. What the fuck? Oh, pate. Oh, bone china pate. Okay, I imagine. 
a kind of porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and plate. Not plate, but pate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Oh, Kristoff, that's bad. But you could have only seen his head after his hat was off. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion and not indicating my forehead. Wait a second, something's not right about that phone call. So after Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bowl Club. Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this bone china paint? Oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put up, put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it? Phoenix Wright. What are they- the boys- <laughs> the girls are fighting! Order! I will have order, Mr. Payne! Y yes your honor, I don't even know why I'm still here to be honest. <laughs> I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear defense attorney Gavin's testimony? Eh, uh, er, <clears throat> well as the prosecutor I- Very well, we'll break for 10 minutes. After which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, your honor. Very well, this will be the final recess for the day. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. Who'd have thought that today would turn out like this? May I? Oh, hi! Chat, it's been a super long time since I played the original trilogy. Was she in the original trilogy? Was she in, like, the last game? She looks familiar. No? She's new? Okay, I think there was, like, a similar, like, brown-haired young girl. That's all. Huh? Huh? What? Hello, sir. Please, pick a card. What's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? Yeah, I was thinking about Pearl, I think. Or Emma. Yeah. Not Maya. Definitely not Maya. The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. Uh. Uh-oh. An ace. Where do I remember this card from? I mean, from the table. Come on, Phoenix. I mean, Apollo. Fuck. <laughs> Mr. Smith's hands has two aces and Mr. Stewart, right. Five aces in all. So, it, yeah, I mean, that's just hard evidence that it happened after the murder, if there's blood on it now. Right? It is true. I've seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. Why does the kid have it? I think maybe Phoenix just passed it off to her and was like, yo, bring this to Apollo. <laughs> the missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw. The truth. My father's fate's in your hands. I know you can do it. Bye. What a weirdo. <laughs> This blood saint card is my trump card for finding the truth. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Schmoll. Little round little head. Now, is that the same? I need to check something. Mm. Yeah, that's an ace of clubs. And this is an ace of clubs. That one's red. So which one is...
Huh. Hmm. Why is, is that supposed to be the same Ace of Clubs? Ace of Spades, sorry, not clubs, fuck. You, you guys know what I mean. Is that supposed to be the same Ace of Spades? Why is there blood on that one? Hmm. Okay. Is it blue? That's a good question. No, it was red. She handed us a red card. So I guess it was from the other deck, then. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes your honor. Erm, will Mr. Er, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, your honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone down in this courtroom. Yeah, true. <laughs> I remember the parrot cross-examination? Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How do you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. The parrot wasn't even that insane. Yeah, no, there's been crazier shit that has happened in this series. Way crazier shit. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have had an or inordinate interest in- Objection! Yeah, there is spirit possession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Hi, Phoenix! Welcome back! Hi! M Mr. Wright! What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, you sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? <laughs> Yo! He's back where he belongs! I'm so happy for him! Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. That one time being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was laying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to be there in the hideout at the moment of the crime. In other words, I must be the real killer. Is that what you're trying to say? Not bad, Apollo. Hey, you split your two comments, Snake? <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. Wait, hold on. I might have to have a little lozenge. Ow. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well, allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. <laughs> they fucking, they fucking swap places. They're like, <laughs> like, I'm the defense attorney and I'm protecting the defendant. Now I, I'm the defense attorney and I'm protecting, I'm the, the defendant and now I'm protecting the defense attorney. No, I'm the defendant and I'm protecting the defense attorney. I love Ace Attorney. <laughs> Finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. Now it's time for me to, <laughs> to me to tell that I've been lying. No, it's my turn to reveal my lies. <laughs> Victim was dead as he appears in the photo. A bald head and an unconscious girl and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. I sense that was not the best place for me to be at that time, so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. So, you witnessed the murder. For better or for worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous, disadvantageous your client. 
What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. <laughs> he wants to be a lawyer again so bad. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going to be up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Gah. I'm gonna be up, up against Mr. Gavin. <laughs> The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. Hold it! That man, you mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers, his aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job. Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? Have a good night, Grief. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Hold it! The little window. You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The Black Marketeers used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes, one of my fears had been unfounded. I'd be walking in on their match, bad form to say the least. Hmm, so far everything he's saying makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. Bald head and unconscious girl, and right, holding a bottle in his hand. Hold it! Oh yeah, I love Ace Attorney music. It goes hard. <sighs> Those were the only three at the scene of the crime. Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Aw, look how wholesome and cute he is. OBJECTION! There must have been somewhere else- someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said! Ah, yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hands? That's what I'd like to know, baby. Gah. Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. Yeah, we have the fifth ace. Maybe it was... <sighs> Maybe it was the blood evidence? They didn't want blood to be... Did they... <sighs> mm... Okay, I have a working theory. Okay, 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 so hear me out. Never mind, I don't have a working theory. Because it was, um... It was this one that they said had three aces, right? Yeah. Why did they... Why did they want to get rid of blood evidence? If that was what happened.
first I should probably examine this, right? This is also a red card, so it shouldn't have been here. It shouldn't have been in their hands at all, because they're all blue. So, no, 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 sorry, they're, they are all red. My bad, my bad. So that was in their hands, and they swapped it out with a different card. Why? Why, though? Why? Who cares if there was blood evidence? Who cares if there was blood evidence? Somebody cared. I think somebody cared. The question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? I mean, it's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? There's blood. There's blood on it. My reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why, why, it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? <laughs> this is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be... Could this be the missing fifth ace? Inconceivable. How could you... What are you doing with that card? Uh, <laughs> Etto... Bleh! <laughs> Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? Etto... <laughs> Just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. <laughs> Me fucking giving my daughter criminal oh, evidence. Shit. No, impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. Fraud? How can you be so sure? I think that the only person who can claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Want me to elaborate? What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Yeah, but why? Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Hmm. Look at this photograph. I guess the trickle would be going backwards, so like, but you know, if you hit somebody in the head with a bottle, like there might be a little splatter, I don't know. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to find the blood. Maybe he died in a different position? R regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right! Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is I've answered your question. What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. Now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence. Objection! Th this is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Objection! Huh? Oh shit, he's doing it! <laughs> oh, I assure you, it's quite based. <laughs> he's doing the thing! Based! What? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Y yeah Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. What the fuck? Are we going 3D? Oh my god. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood in the victim's hand. Given this, there's one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? 
Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? Victims, the killer, the witnesses, the second witnesses. Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Hey, hello? I don't think the victim's position fits. If the trickle of blood went back, like, okay, so, so he's wearing a hat, okay? You hit him in the head with a bottle. His head goes back, his hat comes off, a trickle of blood runs down the back of his head. There's blood that came from somewhere else. It can't have gotten onto the card from that position. Right? Right? Yeah, his back needed to be to the table in order to make that work. Save. <laughs> Hang on. I don't even I don't even know how to save, to be honest. Try it and see. Remember, don't be too smart for the game. <laughs> but I like being smart. <laughs> Got a dresser behind him too. I really think I really think he's he can't. It it's just it just doesn't make any sense. Music didn't stop. God damn it. Isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. God damn it! Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. Right, you'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Ah. Oh, okay, all right. I'm in, I'm in the clear. I'm in the clear. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. That is incidental. I mean, not incidental. That's, um, huh. Swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. <gasps> I- what? I can- wait, okay. Um... I can interact with it? That's fucking funny. The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. Why? When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, what way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing a scene in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now that the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But, this creates another significant contradiction. Again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? How did- yeah, how did, um... Ah, fuck, it's not gonna show me. Because I don't- I don't remember how Gavin described the scene. It has to be the second witness, yeah? Take that! What doesn't make sense is the second witness. You mean to say, I don't make sense? Oh, um, no, of course you do. Uh, sir. As I thought. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> Apollo is sentenced to death. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Court is adjourned. Hang on, guys. Hang on. <laughs> I just got a little silly. <laughs> Mr. Justice, I'm a little hard of hearing. Did you just say something? 
Would you be kind enough to show the court one more time what you mean? Let's test your reasoning skills again. Well then, well, like I guess hers then, right? thinking about the testimony. I wasn't thinking about the actual um, whack, you know? I was more thinking about, like, how they describe the testimony. It's like, obviously her testimony is completely wrong. It's all a lie. The whole thing is a lie. We might not even, like, need to think about it. But also, how would he hit from here? He would have to get up and go over there or something. Take that! Right? The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where he is, his indicator currently is? I would think it would be quite hard, yes. Objection! Objection! Yes, but what you're saying makes enough sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to, the li come to light. But what? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting, as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Like, in front of him. So, maybe they hit him first, the chair spun, and then leaked. Try marking it on the diagram. What? <laughs> There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Yeah. We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike her victim from the front? Here. Here, boss. Take that! In his lap. Oh, yeah. Up, up, here. You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Oh. Well, yeah, it would be impossible. That's what we're saying. Yes, yes. Standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Ha! It's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know! At the very moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there, Apollo! <laughs> um... <laughs> What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Cat? Wait, no, 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 guys. <laughs> Fellas. <laughs> Fellas, wait. Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange it to examine, to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Hey, now hang on a second. <laughs> Occam's razor. Just say, like, he got hit in the head from a different place, and it did a little spin, you know? Is it a secret passage? Is it a secret passage? Uh, Your Honor? What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Mm hmm, yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom, after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Um... Uh... We like, if there was, like, a door behind there, he would have turned around to face the door. He would have been like, what the fuck? because somebody would have come from behind. Oh, it blocks the window! <gasps> I shouldn't have read chat. <laughs> That's okay. That is a problem, isn't it?
Gavin, what are you up to, bud? Why does Gavin know? But that means Gavin would have had to know about the secret passageway. What's this? What is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang! <laughs> Apollo's so funny! <laughs> Notice something, Apollo? A line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim? The killer? The witness? The second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we already know about the crime? Oh, I would have noticed this anyways, so it doesn't even matter. Take that! Take that! Um, about this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would have completely covered up the window to the stairs. That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see it. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? <laughs> Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was. Well, the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court. Exactly. Where did you witness the crime scene from? <laughs> Excuse me, your order? Order, this is court of law and I have, will have order. We, we just now received word from our investigative team of Borscht Bull Club. They would stand with the cupboard to the hideout, your order. Oh, what did they find? Well, your honor, turns out there's a secret passage behind <laughs> What? <laughs> ah, yes. I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks the room, uh, to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings-on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room is a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. Go on. Go on, have a mental breakdown. I've played this attorney before. You see where a line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card. For the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked and the victim's hat was only off his head for a few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, come on, say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we could probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. <laughs> there he crouched hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard, holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. Eek! Eek. What, why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga Orly was out cold, was struck by Mr. Smith. But as time was soon to come, Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops. Leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... Bah, 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 bah. 
After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have had, he would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. How did it, how did it end up with Phoenix's... Mm. No, nah, there's more weird shit going on in this case. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. <laughs> Pushes his hair back. Like a little whore. <laughs> Gavin the Gooner emerging from his goon cave. Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne! Yerk! Um, yes, Your Honor. The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Yerk! Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But, I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest immediately. Objection! Huh? No! Oh. Go on. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. Shakes his head. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Mm, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion? This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. Not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. I illegal evidence? Objection! This little whore. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Er, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. Dude, I'm gonna be honest, guys. All the evidence still points towards Phoenix. Phoenix took the card. Phoenix's fingerprints were on the bottle. What the fuck is going on? There's probably a different murder weapon, then. There has to be a different murder weapon. The court in this case demands an explanation. I can think of only one reason. Oh, yeah, chat. The grape juice thing is like... It's like an in-joke. It's, they're not, they don't actually need to censor alcohol or anything like that. It's like a, yeah, it's like a, it's like an in-joke. Um, I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Hmm. Ah, see how the caught fish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Y yeah boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. Hey, also, the card? Phoenix, you look so bad. You actually look so bad. Th there isn't a card in the bottle. You had the card that was taken from the crime scene that had blood on it. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Just what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... Uh, don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. Um, how do you just say the answer in plain words? It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said that the court in this case demanded an explanation. Don't worry, justice won't leave until justice is done. <laughs> Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down?
Huh. Maybe it's this? I mean, maybe he just, like, picked it up by the fucking nozzle. <laughs> like, <laughs> been since I drank grape juice. Apparently, it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. Wonder how well it goes with Porsche. Okay, let me check and see if this is the same. Yeah, that looks like the same one. It was on the floor. It looks like he just picked it up off of the floor. But can I examine it? I don't think I'm allowed to examine it further. That's annoying. It really bothers me that the bottle is on the victim's side, and I really don't know why. Don't call me overthinking, Olivia! Alright. Wait, fuck. I meant to present this. Take that! Take that! You have to pick it up off the floor. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor? Yes, now reach down and pick it up, without getting out of your chair. See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. With your fingers upside down! Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano. Bottles of grape juice on the floor, to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed, but then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano, and you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon! What? Huh? Okay, well, well, now we have to go check the other bottles, because one of them would have a card in it. Order! What do you have to say about these charges, Mr. Gavin? Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. What? You claim that I switched the bottle. Where is your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite Objection! Shut up! I would be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, you recall I requested an additional investigation? Ooh, good, okay. Oh, yeah. I have your memo about that here the bottles from under the piano at the Borsch Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. <laughs> what, are you gonna dust that for fingerprints too? No, there should be a card in it. I'll be surprised if any were on that, but it is. So the defense attorney did it, then framed his own client and tried to imprison the witness. <laughs> Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say Apollo. Hey, Apollo idiot grabs you by the face, looks at you dead in the eyes. The card, Apollo. Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But why? Just humor me. M mr Wright. <laughs> a bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. There, there it is. There it freaking is. There's something inside the bottle. There it is. <laughs> What's this? That card. It can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Uh, Miss Aurelia? Yes, our little swindling, 
Der Voska. Das. Yeah. That night I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Mr. Wright lost the last hand just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him, but the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? Only you mentioned in this piece of testimony? I snuck a peek at it, found it was the five of hearts. I had a feeling that something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Put it, just put it in a bottle. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> This is the card. The bottles were swapped. <laughs> and the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Christoph Gavin! Go on. Go on, freak out. Oh, he's freaking out. Oh my god, he has, he's, has gravitational powers. That is all. Is, is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing strange. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. <laughs> Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete a tete, right? Oh no, he ain't straight. <laughs> this is insane. What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> Pam, get out of here, bro. <laughs> get out of here, man. I believe it's time we finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. I see. Still, no one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a direct... He, one has to wonder. Right. He didn't even have a connect... Uh, fuck! Was he trying to frame Phoenix? Or none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? These two, Phoenix and, um, and Gavin, are on some weird fucking mental warfare thing. What's going on? Because cause Gavin caused, maybe, maybe was connected to Phoenix losing his attorney license. And then maybe tried to frame him for murder? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. They're flirting. About this victim, Mr. Shady, Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as traveler. An odd profession, to be sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange for a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yeah? Seven years. You still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me. What does that mean? What does that mean? Why does Phoenix end up, like, flirting with every prosecutor? <laughs> both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated. This courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me, Apollo. Me. Yeah, he's cheating on Edgeworth with that hoe. I actually can't believe it. This is a dark time for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own initial trial. I hope Edgeworth is in this game. I love Edgeworth. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright. <laughs> our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Wright. Yay! Man, he looks so cute like a hobo. 
Court is adjourned. Guys, I miss Edgeworth. <laughs> Where is he? I miss him. I miss him. Where is Edgeworth? Thanks, Apollo. You came through just like I thought you would. You guys think... Yeah, Phoenix... Phoenix is for real smelling like dank right now. It was you who cornered Mr. Gav, the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too, today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yeah, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I won't question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment... What was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find out the answer to that question yourself. Answer, right. Today was full of questions without answers, most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me, I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Weird! Why? Weird! What does it mean? Your daughter, right? That's right, she is my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. And also, why was he wearing it? Why was the uh, victim wearing it? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, oh. Wait. Wait, but that's- that's perjury! <laughs> you testified! You said that that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? You really said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. Oh, okay, okay. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside of it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Why can't- Answer the question, Phoenix! Answer the question! We're not ready for the answer. It seems like this is the- This case is going to continue to be important to the main story of the game. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices after all. I still can't believe I just let- I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo? Yeah? How about coming to work for me? Do you even have an office, Phoenix? Uh, you mean at the Wright & Co. Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. Oh. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you- you're not a- Oh, I turned in my badge. Yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. And at the middle of it all was one man. Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left the law for good. The incident. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Phoenix! Phoenix, what are you doing, bro? Forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Bevan struck me as odd, it's true. Yeah, like why would he have that card? Why would he have taken the card? It just seems, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. Phoenix, what's happening? Take that! You mean this, don't you? I got this from your, uh, daughter, Mr. Wright. Yeah, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in the in its place. Lucky for us. 
Guys, Edgeworth didn't forge evidence. Edgeworth was a, a, a law-abiding uh, prosecutor and a good boy. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? You can't just update autopsy reports? Yeah, but that was like, that's not the same thing. <laughs> I think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene, the real killer. What the fuck? My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then? Then you really... Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But, but you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago, none of that matters much now, does it? What the fuck? Phoenix has gone rogue. He's gone crazy. He's ah. What the fuck? I punched him. Hell yeah, Apollo. It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. Drop in, if you'd like. Mr. Wright. Oh, uh, about your uppercut. Try yelling. Take that! Next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. Oh no, Phoenix! He has depression! He's like a depressed loser ex ex attorney who has, has fallen into like a dark hole, is making like bad choices. We can fix him! We can fix him! And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. <sighs> Can Apollo fix him? Can Apollo fix Phoenix? We did it, guys! We beat the tutorial! <laughs> Yay! I can't believe Phoenix is on his punished arc. Okay, hold on. Hang on, chat. Hi! Hi, chat! Hello! Um, let's see. Housekeeping. Guys, I'm not gonna, no, 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 no. Okay, so technically I lost my, like, my, uh, my juice or whatever. Like, I technically failed the case, but it was only because I'm too smart for the game. <laughs> or, or, or I presented evidence when it, like, when the, the game wasn't ready for me to, like, I needed to examine it first. Shaking my head, shaking my head. Ah, <sighs> okay. Well, well, that's not how that works. It, it yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I'm not taking that L. I don't accept it. We still on for stream tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. Tomorrow we continue Song of Saya at 6 p.m. PST. And then. And then, uh, and then normal stream Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oof, my brain is all squeezed out like a, 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 a sponge. Mm, 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 fun, fun. Yeah, we're going back to Meat World tomorrow. <laughs> I hate EU viewers, I hate them. I don't, I'm not super sure when we're gonna uh, continue this one because Let's see. We're playing Disco Elysium right now, uh, which is a very, very dialogue-heavy game. 
which means I need to mix in like an action game to the mix. I know people are like, after you finish Song of Saya, you should continue, um, you should do uh, Apollo Justice. You know what? I might end up doing that. That might be what we end up doing uh, is continuing Apollo Justice after Song of Saya. I, I, even though I already said that I want to play um, me and you and her after Song of Saya, but we can pivot. It's not like we started it or anything. It is a heavy reading game. Yeah, so it fits into that slot well, right? After that, it's Higurashi time. We'll see if I think that I can handle something incredibly, incredibly long like that. This go in live 2D rigging streams or what you could do on the weekly streams. Yeah, it's just like the live 2D rigging stuff might not happen every week because I need to go make the art for it, which, which like is a little bit time consuming. So I might not have it ready, like depending, you know? Having said that, we're definitely not done with the head rig yet. So we can probably continue that next week. Okay, well, let me find somebody to raid and then I'm out of here. I'm gone. Why not do art streams of drawing some parts? Honestly, I just don't really want to because I want to, it's so long and it's so tedious and it's so boring that I'd rather just put on a bunch of like videos and just watch them while I'm working and not talk. It's just, just one of those things. Yeah, people have said that me and you and her is really fucking good. So we're definitely going to play it someday. Full body monster hunting? What does that mean? It looks like Joel is playing some monster hunter. Full body monster hunting? What is he doing? What the fuck? What's he? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> his full body tracking on his 3D model? Well, then why is. Wait. Oh, Tricky's doing. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Tricky is the. is dropping Spider Girl. Oh my god. I should have just, like. <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry. Here, you like bug girls, you like monster girls. Tricky has a spider girl model now. Um, not replacing normal Tricky, but uh, is around. Doesn't she hate spiders? Oh yeah. Yes, she does. <clears throat> okay, uh, yeah, oof. Oh man, I'm kind of exhausted. <laughs> that was a whole lot of reading. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Uh, I hope you guys have a really good weekend. I hope you guys have a good night. I kiss the homies on the head. Mwah. And I am just going to send the raid off like right, like right now. Like right, in like a second. And like now. Okay, goodbye. Have a good night. Bye-bye.